Most people take vacations in order to relax and escape from their daily life. Average destinations include idyllic beaches and pampering spas, but some people have a wild side and prefer to brave the world's most intimidating locales. Today we are looking at the 10 scariest attractions in the world. Huashan Cliffside Path allows visitors to China's Mount Hua to experience a truly terrifying climb to its summit. It was first built over 700 years ago and is reputed to be the most dangerous hiking trail in the world because it is very steep and narrow and there is only one safety rope to protect you from the bottomless abyss. Many tourists come here to challenge themselves and feel the adrenaline rush. Huishan Plank Walk was first built by a Taoist priest named Hei Zhezhen more than 700 years ago, with stone nails carved into the cliff supporting the wooden plank for people to walk on. Now it has been improved with reinforcements, but the path is still very narrow. So you are literally one step away from the bottomless chasm with no protection from the guardrails. In addition, the walk does not lead to other paths on the mountain, which means you need to return by the way you came. This becomes even more intimidating when you reach someone walking the opposite direction and you are forced to maneuver around them. Central China is home to one of the world's most intimidating footbridges. Remarkably, this is all part of an amusement park meant to attract tourists. Known as Jixian Feiyu, or Extreme Leaps, it is nearly 500 feet above the ground with large slats for tourists to jump across. Normally, the height alone is terrifying, but recently the footbridge got some extremely bad press when a tourist rope snapped. A video of the terrifying incident shows the man leaping across the suspended bridge with large gaps between the planks at the Wansheng Ordovician theme park near Changjing in China. It is only until the man safely makes it to the podium on the other end of the bridge that he notices the harness had detached. There was no safety net beneath the bridge, which is about 500 feet above the rocks below. An investigation by government officials found theme park staff hadn't attached the safety cord properly, the South China Morning Post reported. However, a staff member with the Propaganda Bureau at the Wansheng Economic Development Zone told the Beijing News the video was a publicity stunt aimed to raise the theme park's profile. If it's a marketing ploy, I hope it closes down soon, someone wrote on Chinese social media platform Weibo, the Post reported. In fact, it has since been proven that it was not a marketing stunt, and the park has been closed down. Suicide Forest is the location in Japan that has received great media attention due to a strange coincidence. It is the place in the world with the second highest frequency of suicides. While the density of the trees and the often treacherous terrain in Aokigahara Forest make it hard to determine an exact number of suicides, the number of dead bodies that are found is shockingly high. In 2003 alone, 105 bodies were found in the forest. With a nickname like Suicide Forest, it seems like Aokigahara Forest is a hugely popular suicide spot, but it's actually not the biggest suicide destination in the world. The Suicide Forest is said to be the second most common destination for suicides, with the Golden Gate Bridge taking the number one spot. Unsurprisingly, Aokigahara is reportedly haunted. The forest is reportedly inhabited by yurei, or ghosts with unfinished business, who are unable to enjoy peace in the afterlife. While many people attribute the strange behavior of their compasses to paranormal activity in the forest, there's actually a more logical explanation. Because of the high iron content of the lava on the forest floor, devices that respond to magnetism, like compasses, often move in strange patterns when near it. The suicide forest is so well known that it's frequently referenced in books, games, songs, and other media. The forest's worldwide notoriety has even given rise to mentions in countless popular films, including 47 Ronin, The Forest, and Gus Van Sant's 2015 Sea of Trees, featuring Matthew McConaughey. Volcano surfing, or volcano boarding, is a sport performed on volcano slopes. The most popular slope is the Cerro Negro near Leon, in western Nicaragua. Riders hike up the volcano and slide down, sitting or standing, on a thin plywood or metal board. Nicaragua is known as the land of lakes and volcanoes. It isn't by chance. There are 19 active volcanoes scattered around the country. Of these, a few surround Leon, and some are close to the Granada Nicaragua tourist hotspot, and two make up Ometepe Island. This is the only place in the world where you can sit upright on plywood feet first and coast down a cindery flank of a still active volcano, says Nick Porter, an affable chain-smoking tour guide who left his job at a bank in Manchester, England in 2013, went traveling, and never returned. According to CNN, volcano boarding is listed number two on the list of extreme sports you must do before you die. National Geographic Channel adventurer and journalist Zoltan Istvan credits himself with inventing the volcano boarding sport on Mount Yasur on the island of Tana and Vanuatu in 2002, though Istvan first visited the active volcano in 1995. 
He filmed his adventure, and it later aired on the National Geographic Channel in a five-minute news segment. Perched at the top of the Stratosphere Tower in Las Vegas is one of the world's most daunting attractions. Like a 1,000-foot-high teeter-totter, X-Scream drops eight riders 27 feet over the edge of the Stratosphere Tower, then rises up and rolls back, then repeats three times total, with a couple of surprises along the way. At a height of approximately 866 feet, it is officially the world's third highest amusement ride. We wanted to build one of the most intense attractions in the world, Mike Gilmartin, public relations manager for the Stratosphere, said. x Scream is a new generation of extreme throw rides. We feel that it's a very imposing ride and also a very psychological ride. It plays on a passenger's primal fear of falling before it pulls you back from the edge. Conceived in the year 2000, the ride cost just under $3 million to construct. Construction of x Scream began on the ground as various pieces were put together. The parts were lifted via helicopter, where they were assembled on top of the tower. The entire process of lifting the pieces and building the ride only took two hours, including a 40-minute refueling period for the helicopter. The total weight of the ride is 50,000 pounds, but nearly that much weight in the form of concrete and steel was removed to make room for the attraction. A few miles from the heart of Mexico City lies La Isla de las Muñecas, the island of dolls, where thousands of dolls hang from the trees. The island, located in the Ochimilco canals outside of Mexico's capital, is truly the stuff of pure terror. According to local legend, the island's caretaker, Don Julian Santana, moved to the island in the 1950s after abandoning his family. It was in the canals outside of the island that he found the dead body of a drowned girl and her doll. Convinced that her spirit haunted the island, Santana hung abandoned dolls he found throughout the canal as a way to appease the dead girl's soul. The dolls, strung up in the deteriorated condition that Santana found them in, continued to hold a silent vigil on trees and buildings throughout the island. Don Julian Santana began collecting lost dolls from the canals and the trash near his island home. He is also said to have traded produce he grew to locals for more dolls. Santana did not clean up the dolls or attempt to fix them, but rather put them up with missing eyes and limbs, covered in dirt, and generally in whatever ramshackle state he found them in. Even when dolls arrive in good shape, the wind and weather turn them into cracked and distorted versions of themselves. In 2001, Santana was found drowned in the river. Bethesda in the United Kingdom is home to Zip World Velocity, the fastest zip line in the world and the longest in Europe. It has been dubbed as the nearest thing to flying other than a skydive. It has clocked in speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour, found within its breathtaking spot more than 1,000 feet up. Expect adrenaline, stunning views across the Manai Straits, and possibly a few screams as you fly headfirst down a mountain. Before taking to the Big Zipper, try out the smaller but still thrilling Little Zipper to get a taste of the experience, reaching speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. According to the founder, the brand new experience features custom-made technology developed by our world-class team to increase speed, accessibility, and comfort for our riders and spectators alike. The zip line is so popular that the company has opened two more locations across the United Kingdom. With a steeper decline, Velocity 2 lets visitors travel from 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 10 seconds before reaching the top speed of 125 miles per hour, equal to the legal limit for standard trains in the UK, and 5 miles per hour faster than the speed at which you fall when skydiving. Zip World also has doubled the capacity of the zip line, meaning that four people can enjoy a flight at the same time. Sean Taylor, the co-founder of ZipWorld, said, Velocity 2 is the fastest zipline in the world, and it's right here in North Wales, the adventure capital of Europe. Smack in the middle of Tennessee is one of the world's craziest attractions, a roller coaster zipline. The Flying Ox, located in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, is the world's first cable-to-rail zipline roller coaster. According to a press release, the Flying Ox takes fearless riders 80 feet in the air for a 1,000-foot-long ride. Instead of traveling in a straight line, riders wind, drop, and soar through the air at approximately 15 miles an hour. The roller coaster zipline fuses the fast, free-flying sensation of a zipline with the ups, downs, and turns of a roller coaster, giving the rider the ultimate thrill of flying. Opened by Paula Deen's Lumberjack Feud Show and Adventure Park, the Flying Ox was inspired by the history of the Smoky Mountain logging industry. The theme park also includes a log roll and boom run, a lumberjack-themed ropes course, speed climb towers, and a simulated freefall from an 80-foot tall jump platform. Colorado is home to another aerial attraction, the Royal Rush Sky Coaster. 
sweep 50 miles per hour through the Rocky Mountain air in a free fall, momentarily dangling 1,200 feet above the Arkansas River on this one-of-a-kind attraction. This thrilling experience doesn't have the title of the world's scariest sky coaster for nothing. Ever since the Royal Gorge Bridge opened in 1929, humankind has sought to make what already is a hair-raising adventure even more of a thrill. They've done it illegally, parachuting off the bridge or flying under it in an airplane. Or they've done it legally by trying some of the park's eye-popping adventure rides. Several parachutists have jumped from the bridge illegally. It is not a feat that is encouraged due to the gorge's unpredictable winds. When it comes to legal thrills, perhaps the most frightening is the Royal Rush Sky Coaster. Dubbed the world's scariest sky coaster ride, it cost $600,000 to build and debuted in 2003. At the apex of the swing, it gives riders a view that is about 1,300 feet down into the gorge. A reduced gravity aircraft is a type of fixed-wing aircraft that provides brief, near-weightless environments for training astronauts, conducting research, and making gravity-free movie shots. Versions of such airplanes were operated by the NASA Reduced Gravity Research Program, and one is currently operated by the Human Spaceflight and Robotic Exploration Programs of the European Space Agency. The unofficial nickname Vomit Comet became popular among those who experienced their operation. How can weightlessness be achieved? The parabolic flight is an aerobatic maneuver that customers can also request during fighter jet flights. Only small parabola is possible there, and you can only float within the constraints of your seatbelts. Other larger aircraft allow thrill-seekers to float for ex-